Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> no, she did it. Hi, guys. Today, I decided that I just wanted to talk because I feel like you guys never hear me talk. So I'm here with Josette. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm obviously Michaela. And you guys can follow me on all my social media platforms at Michaela Dancer. All my socials are just Josette Pimenta. And yeah, you can find us on all the platforms, you know, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, <laughs> a Snapchat, a Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so today we have a fun little game for you guys. It's called Pick from the Hat, but it's a virtual hat because <laughs> <laughs> I don't have hats. So pretty much we just wrote down a bunch of different topics and we're just going to shake the phone and see what pops up. And then we're just going to, you know, talk. <laughs> so I guess I will do the honors. Shake, shake. How did we become confident? That's Aww. a good first topic. If I really like go back to like the root of it, probably I had like super supportive uh, parents and like a very supportive like family. Um, so when I would like get bullied or something like that, because that happened in like school a lot, mm -hmm. I had them to kind of lean on and they would just, you know, explain to me that what other people say is not a direct reflection of like, who you are and you know you just have to be who you are in the world no matter what that is whatever feels good to you and that's once you make peace with that you know and you're not trying to be somebody else that's the exhausting part I feel about like having confidence is just the lack of it is you know you're trying to do what you think everybody else wants you to yeah, do yeah but you can't do that you have to do exactly like what you want to do and you have to be true to yourself and I feel like that's where a lot of people really start lacking true self-confidence is because they're so they're trying so hard to like be something they're not yeah and that's how like I kind of gained confidence is when I started being like completely true to myself I started finding myself I started journaling every day yeah. I like dealt with a lot of like bad experiences and like obviously like everybody I have trauma and stuff and it's just how you react to those things like of course I was like really down about it and then one day I was like I don't want to feel like this anymore I want to like take control of my life and I just started really working on like my mental health and just telling myself every day like you I'm big on like manifestation and like words yeah. of affirmation and I'm like I'm beautiful I'm confident I'm the hottest girl in the room like I would tell myself stuff like that I'm like I'm a baddie <laughs> and then like when you really start looking at yourself in the mirror every day and tell yourself that you believe it and you yeah. start becoming what you're saying so if you're speaking negativity into the air you're gonna start reflecting that whereas if you speak positivity you reflect that so I feel like my confidence journey definitely started just from like the words I was telling myself and then like you were saying like I have a really supportive family and they've helped guide me in so many ways that I'm so like blessed to have like been able to have because you know family is so important and then I started holding myself accountable like I would mm -hmm. go on TikTok and like social media and I would start like posting about confidence and I would like post videos of myself that I feel like I normally wouldn't have been comfortable doing and then I really started reflecting that mm -hmm. so I feel like starting my journey on social media and then having so many people start following me and being like wow like you're helping me love myself Aww. it started really like forcing me to really like reflect like what I was speaking yeah so. and that's like it's the best thing you could do because you don't realize like how many people you genuinely touch even if you it's just crazy. like pass them you know walking down the street and mm -hmm. you smile at them and it's <laughs> just like when you radiate like that love or that self-confidence and that could have made such a difference in somebody else's life whether you you realize it or not and yeah. now that you're doing it at such like a large scale on something like TikTok is just such a wonderful gift yeah um, I didn't even realize how many people I would touch. Like when I started doing it, like I said, I was kind of doing it just for myself. Like, wow, I really have to hold myself accountable. And like when you visually see yourself changing, like that helps. But then as I was doing it, like I started gaining this platform. And every day I get messages from like young girls and young boys. And they're like, wow, like you've helped me so much. Like I'm starting to love myself. And I'm like, wow, like this is amazing. Yeah, because it's, it's scary to sometimes ex express yourself the way that you want to express yourself that yeah. day if it's maybe even something that society kind of tells you not to like you know take your twerking for like example mm. you love that so much and like burlesque with me you know and like cabaret they're very you know sexy and sometimes society kind of wants to put that in a box and like yeah shove it they want to shame you for it yeah but it should just be you know celebrated you know it's it's not bad to 
love yourself and like love your body on like a spiritual level (laughs) you know you know touching on that for a minute too like Obviously, I love twerking. I love whining. Like, I'm learning all these different dance styles that come from all these different cultures. And I'm so, like, confused on why when things come from different cultures, it's so shamed. Like, Mm. whining, for example, I took a class from this girl who's from the islands. And it was such an amazing class. And she told us, she's like, whining is defined as the celebration of divine feminine power and divine femininity. And it's like, you're literally doing that dance style to celebrate being a woman. But people look at it and they shame you for it and they're like oh you're doing that for male attention you're doing that you're sexualizing yourself you're asking for it and it's like no this is just a different culture so like you should educate yourself on it instead of shaming me for it and also as women I feel like we are like beautiful women are hot women are sexy so why is it such a problem for us to like embrace that yeah well it is the you bringing up that it's like a a cultural thing Uh, it really is so different around the world. Women are celebrated so differently depending on the country. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, we have certain freedoms here that I'm so grateful for that other women, you know, would just die to have, you know? And then there's countries like where you're saying where like the dance and that like, that sexual energy is just so celebrated or you go to Europe and like you could be topless on a beach somewhere and nobody bats an eyelash. (laughs) Like they're just like, Oh, it's normal. Yeah, because it's not um, it's not looked at as something mm-hmm. that needs to be like, oh, look away. You yeah. know, it's just part it's of so life. It's so interesting to see like what people choose to sexualize and then like what day they decide to sexualize it on. Mm-hmm. And it's just really frustrating. Like a problem that I've been having is it's like praise when a woman's nudes get leaked. But when I consensually post a video dancing, I'm a slut. Mm. So that's just like I don't understand <laughs> it's so confusing. <laughs> I dance and I love feeling sexy for me. And that is another thing that's helped my confidence journey so much. Like, I can't even explain it. Like, I've always loved dancing sexy. Like, I remember being, like, literally, like, 16 years old in dance class. And I was like, yeah! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> like, that's just always been who I am. Like, I've always had, like, a natural sex appeal to myself. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not going to, like, turn that away because some people want to shame me for it. Like, I feel like we should embrace ourselves as women. Like, we're women yeah (laughs) it should be celebrated dude and it's just like one of those things too where i know that you're like this too or like (laughs) saving this but i'll lock myself in my house okay and i'll fucking like close the windows and like turn the lights off and like like put on like lights or something and i'll just fucking freestyle yes i will be feeling myself for myself (laughs) like nobody's i know i'm not doing it for anybody because i'm not filming it by yourself yeah my fucking cat is looking at me like oh i'm sorry can i curse is that okay yeah curse. (laughs) my cat's just like you know like but it's just for me because like i'm literally just feeling free with the music and just like just celebrating it feels so good yeah like, i'll always put on like my sexiest outfit and i'm like oh yeah i'm that one <laughs> <laughs> i love that it's the greatest feeling in the world <sighs> do that if you don't do that just do it for yourself <laughs> like just feel sexy and confident for yourself there's nothing wrong with being sexy and confident it's like the greatest feeling in the world and since becoming like confident and like really stepping into the shoes that i'm supposed to be in all these amazing things have happened for me just by being true to myself. So yeah. be true to yourself. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Favorite part of being a creator. Favorite part of being a creator. It, oh, <laughs> I think my favorite part of being a creator is just, okay. So ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be a creator. I remember like being 12 years old and I used to have that long snap story where you'd be like, damn, is this bitch done yet? Like, <laughs> What is that girl from Nemo tapping on the glass? That was literally my Snapchat story (laughs) all the time. People would always be like, dude, your stories are so long. I always wanted to do YouTube videos. I remember like me and my sister, like I would literally force my poor little sister to like create dances with me and record them. (laughs) So I think my favorite part about being a creator is just having a platform to create and have Mm -hmm. my stuff be seen. And then my other favorite part is the people that I'm able to inspire. Like I love motivating people (laughs) and encouraging people to like do what they do. And it's so cool that I have a platform now to like really be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Like it's just also cool that it's a a job. (laughs) Yeah. Like that blows my mind every single day. Now we're in a digital era and it's kind of fair game for anybody. So like if you have a phone, you can literally just click record and 
be a creator. Yep. Like you can just, and it doesn't have to just be dance. It's cooking. It's education. It's literally whatever you want to put out into the world. And it's such an amazing time to be a creator. So the fact that it's so accessible and like there's so much freedom with it and I feel like there's no cap like you could just keep growing forever do whatever you want and keep growing <sighs> that's it's, the most exciting it's don't so you cool. just feel like so fortunate too like you get to do what you love every single day and that's your job yeah like I feel like I'm not working because I love what I'm doing like I mean it is work I put in so many hours like literally at least like 10 hours a day every single day I haven't had a day off in the past two years yeah. even Christmas day I'm filming yeah and I love it. Like, I'm so grateful that that's what I get to call my job. Yeah, because it's true. Like, when you are doing something that you absolutely love to do, it does not feel like work. Because exactly. it's just who you are. It's literally who you are. It's part of your everyday routine. Um, but that's another good point that you bring up. A lot of people think that, oh, like, creators have it so easy. Like, mm -mm. <laughs> oh, my it God. is so hard. <laughs> you, you basically <laughs> turned in, like, working a 9 to 5 to working, like, 24 hours. Yes, literally. Like, but. even before bed, like, I will be up until 4 a.m. just answering emails, answering DMs, trying to plan out my business. I have calls all day long with, like, managers, companies. I have podcasts. I have dance classes. I have vocal lessons. I have to sing. I have to create for Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, YouTube shorts, I have to hire editors, I have to have publicists, you have to be so strategic, you have to know how to analyze, you have to know like how numbers work and like how to keep growing numbers, you have to deal with hate comments, you have to deal with mental health, literally Ooh. like, yeah, mental health, <laughs> like I have been so burnt out and like that's a whole nother topic, like burnout, mental health, all that, you also have like the pressure of like maintaining a good platform so that you can keep inspiring people you have to worry about cancel culture like i don't think people understand and then on top of that you have to be creative yeah like like you actually have to like <laughs> not listen to any of the bullshit and then you actually have to like what you first wanted to do was just actually create something yes, because you're an artist so. exactly and then you have to deal with like the pressure of society and like how you look and like what you do and you just have to like do all that at once yeah. in one single day every single day yeah don't get me wrong, I love it, but it is not an easy job. Like, I remember, like, being in school. I was a full-time college student. I had jobs, and none of that was as hard as what I do now. Like, there's no comparison. Like, this is yeah. hard. <laughs> well, d yeah, uh, it's a little different for me. Like, yes, in a sense, but, like, I would say that, like, I bartended for eight mm -hmm. years. And then I also did, like, like, dancing, like, going on tours and, like, things like that. And the, the physical labor of like working at like a hot bar in Miami till 4 a.m. Oh, in the yeah. morning. And like <laughs> that was such like a, an environment that I was like, I cannot survive and like do, and the money was like, before I like knew what you could like do as a creator, mm -hmm. like it's you shit. Can, I mean, you can turn it up as a bartender. <laughs> if you're like <laughs> looking for, you know, you get your cash at the end of the night. Like if you are doing it at a hot spot, like you can kill it. <laughs> It's great. I don't know if anybody like knows like what dancers get treated like. It's or, horrible. Like, Just it's for an example, I can't say names or anything, but I was offered to be in three separate music videos for three massive artists, three day shoots, 12 hours each day on set, $150. And then another artist, you want to know what she was going to offer me? Huh, zip zilch <laughs> for exposure. And I'm like, what exposure? I have a platform with 13 million people. I don't yeah. need exposure. I need to get paid as a professional. And the problem is within the industry is if I say no, they know another girl who's new, fresh out of college, fresh out of high school, fresh out of whatever, who has no resume and no platform and no name to herself is going to do it for free for the exposure. Mm -hmm. I remember doing a music video for free when I was 18 years old in college. I was like, wow, this is going to be great. I got exposure. My face was literally up in Times Square but you know what that did for me? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it did nothing. Yeah. What's crazy though is now like, so, you, and it's cool because we got to see it at like the, uh -huh. like I've seen the van, the van tour bus life and then I've seen the like creator thing and the dancers are actually becoming stars. Mm -hmm. Like they are being looked at as like, like Charlie was a dancer. Like she's yep. the 16 year old <laughs> dancer and she is a full blown celebrity now. And it's, it's just crazy. Like, I love that. It's like amazing. I can't love that more. <laughs> like I'm just like, yeah. I feel like people undervalue and underestimate dancers, but they don't understand like the amount of time we put in, 
the amount of effort we put in, all the hard work we put in, mm -hmm. like we deserve to get paid for that. And the thing that I love now is that dancers are taking that and we're turning to like content creators. Yeah. Like we're turning dance into like social media. Yeah. So we're getting our bag from social media now. And yeah. it's like super dope that we have those resources. Yeah. Oh, yo, I had so many friends that were like, I just don't know how you could be like. And I'm like, oh, you don't know how I could be like? Well, let me tell you why I could be like, because I could do that, right? And do my little TikTok dance, which you might not feel like fond about. But however, it's like paying my rent. Yes. And then I get to take that money and I get to create all the art that I want to create myself on like my own dime. And exactly. it's just like... I think the only part that saddens me, though, are like people that are dancers but don't want to be in the social media realm. It's definitely something that um, I hope in the long run the dancers take a hold of it and they all yes. everybody's got to stand together. <laughs> we it need can't change. be just like one person that's like well, well, these are my no, like everybody <laughs> at the same time and stop taking jobs for free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, shall we shake? Yeah, we shall shake. <laughs> <laughs> when did we start creating? Out of the womb. No, <laughs> literally. I came out with maracas. I came out the womb. <laughs> hey, hey. Um, I started creating, honestly, since I was a kid. I remember me and my grandpa used to watch Shirley Temple together when I was like two years old. And I would tap around my living room with him. And then he was like, he said to my mom, he's like, you need to get her into a dance class. So my whole career is literally because of my grandpa. Aww. I actually like blew up on TikTok. Like some of my first videos were dancing with my grandpa. I love that man with my whole heart. But, um. I started when I was literally like three years old. I took my first dance class and ever since then I've been creating everything I possibly could. Me and my sister used to put on plays for my family. <laughs> we used to like record dances for like Facebook and YouTube. Um, and from there, like I've just been creating my whole life. Mm -hmm. But what, like when exactly did you start TikTok? Um, I started TikTok like two years ago. Okay. Like Ooh. I would say probably like a month or two after it like turn from musically to tiktok that was me and dominic too <laughs> like straight and, up yeah and i started tiktok as a joke just like everybody else did yeah. but deep down like it wasn't a joke like i loved it <laughs> i was like yo <laughs> yeah. i'm noticing consistency is key and like specific things that people like instead of me just like i don't know doing like nothing you know like yeah. <laughs> actually doing like good videos yeah. will go viral so i started doing that more often and then slowly but surely like it started growing fast and then it took me about a year to hit a million and then after that like it literally took me a year to hit like seven more million so mm -hmm. it's just been growing like really fast yeah it's kind of like a, a, a snowball effect yeah like you have like little lulls like here and there but i mean this is such a good like life lesson too mm -hmm. It's not just social media, but like consistency for your life. It's key. Oh my gosh. Anything, anything you do, if you are consistent with it, it does not matter. You will be successful. You just don't give up. Period. And you're consistent. <laughs> like, ooh, you want to be healthy. You want to just like feel good. Well, guess what? Consistently every single day, you need yes. to be taking care of your body, your mind, your spirit. Like, And it takes time. Like with social yeah. media, for example, and this is again another life lesson, like you could post a thousand videos but the thousand and one will be the one that goes viral. Yeah. So you can't like ever give up on anything that you're doing. You have to stay consistent. And if it's something that you're passionate about, don't give up yeah. because all it takes is that one day, that one person to see you, that one video. Yeah. So, and oh, wait, this is another good like thing about social media. I feel is it's like make the content that you actually want to go viral for. Yes. Like, cause you don't know what video <laughs> is going to go viral. So like I've seen creators get this like video that pops off and now they feel like oh my god i like, have to keep doing that yeah like that's all i can and then do. you get categorized in like a certain niche mm -hmm. so just do like what you want to do don't ever be pressured because the one video you're pressured into doing could be the one that goes viral and while that's great now you're grouped in this niche that you're kind of stuck in yeah for sure and that's another thing too i feel like another problem that creators have is they get put in this niche and then they're too afraid to step out of it because they think their views are going to go down if you're passionate about something take the hit because eventually your niche will change like post yep. what you want to post <laughs> yeah and you can build different like audiences through mm -hmm. that way too yes. like and people will get to know you for those different things like i mean I, this is going to be something for you and i that we're both going to go through is people see us one way, but we're both starting to do music. Yeah. And so like, <laughs> yeah, I was a performer before TikTok, but like the 
majority, I would say like 90% of my followers have no idea that I was no like a idea. performer. No idea. I feel like the majority of my uh, followers don't even know that I like dance professionally and like was technically trained since I was three years old. Yeah. Like I feel like they all just see me shake my ass. I'm like, yeah, I love shaking my ass, but I have so many other things that like they have no idea that I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my God. You guys wait till you hear her voice. <laughs> wait till you hear her stuff. Wait till you see just her kiss. moves. Oh, I like this one. What are you most grateful for? Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like I'm grateful for everything. So I think I'm just going to categorize everything. I'm grateful for life. (laughs) Like so many things are worthy of being grateful for. Like I'm grateful for my family. I have the most amazing family. I'm grateful for my friends. My friends back home in Michigan, shout out to y'all because you guys are my homies for life. (laughs) Like I don't think anybody knows how close, like I have rings on my fingers for my friends. This one is for Sydney. This one's me and Gabby. It's a Michigan to California. (laughs) Maddie, you can't see this yet. I don't know when this video is coming out, but her birthday is this week. She's so Um, sweet too. (laughs) We're going to Nashville. So I bought us matching rings. Like I love my friends. My friends that I've made in California I'm so grateful for like you guys are holding me down (laughs) keeping me sane because this place is just like crazy I'm grateful for food I'm grateful for my kitty cat that I just got Gus Gus! (laughs) I'm grateful for social media I'm grateful for my job I'm grateful for everything (laughs) hell yeah I think well you nailed the life one I write in a gratitude journal every morning and the first thing I always write down is, it's like, what are you grateful for? Same, I have one of those. Do you have it? Mine, <laughs> the first thing I always write is waking up. Literally. Because it's step one. Yes. Like, the fact that, like, we were granted another day on the planet. Period. And, like, oh, my God. That's a gift. And then we also have our freedom. And that's a gift. So, like, it doesn't matter what I want to do. I could just run around in a chicken suit if that's how I feel that day or (laughs) like it lit the possibilities are endless but um yeah I just that's so amazing and then my my family and my friends and I I can't even like talk about it because I will immediately cry like (laughs) I I I'm so attached to the people in my life yes that it's like I I can't I'm gonna yeah and I'm just like so grateful to be like in this position right now like we have a roof over our head we have food on the table and we're able to like i'm grateful that i'm able to help people yeah i think that's another big thing like yeah. i can help people and that's something i've always wanted to do yeah so that's and really it's cool. just it's just be like it's just stepping into like who you are is the biggest way to yes. really help people i'm grateful for confidence yeah if i wouldn't have found confidence in myself i would not be sitting here right now i'd be like at home sad <laughs> <laughs> Is it time to shake? Let's shake. Let's shake. <laughs> what will it be? Camera's going to see it first. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't show the last Ooh, one. Ooh, mental health as creators. Oh, damn. Pull up a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep this one kind of like short and sweet because I feel like I could talk about this forever. Maybe I will have my own video just about mental health. Yeah. But I will say this year has been a really hard year with my mental health. I have been so burnt out. I have horrible anxiety and I feel like people watching would never get that. I have really bad performance anxiety, like to the point where I don't even like going to dance classes anymore because I literally feel like I'm going to puke and die in dance Mm. classes. Like I love going to dance classes, but now that I have a big platform, like I know that I'm going to get called out to perform. Even if I suck, it's just because they're like, oh, she has a platform. I'm going to call her out. And I hate that. Like I get so nervous in front of the camera and it's like one of the scariest things where like being a content creator I get to do that in like my own home environment so it's different but when I'm out in public I have such bad social anxiety Mm. and nobody would know that like when I'm with my friends I'm a complete nutcase but when I'm out at events and networking and like stuff like that I feel so ridiculous um Mm -hmm. I feel like this year too like I've never struggled with like depression and like being sad but this year has been really hard with that But I also am, like, aware of myself and, like, I got a therapist and I started journaling and, like, I got back on, like, my, like, words of affirmation and manifesting. I feel like when you start going down, it's really hard to get up. Mm. So it's been really hard and I've really been, like, focusing on, like, pulling myself up. And now I'm, like, feeling really good again. Like, I'm on my up wave again. But I feel like as creators, we just deal with so much every day that it's hard sometimes to remember to take care of ourselves. Um, So I've been really focusing on myself (laughs) yeah oh that's so good and I love that you like figured that out at your age too because girl girl. (laughs) 
<laughs> I feel like I didn't really do like a, a shift until I was about when I turned 27, my life just like completely changed like my whole attitude on life and like my mindset and just the people I surrounded myself with I stopped drinking like my whole life really changed and I just have such a different mindset now and you know it, it matters so much like I understand that anxiety because I would I would feel that way about like like I never really liked drinking mm -hmm. you know and then I, I realized that it was kind of becoming a problem when like I had like anxiety about like being at the, you know, soiree and then like I would be too drunk and then I would be like, fuck, well, I actually don't like this. I don't like being mm -hmm. drunk. And then I felt like I was like stuck in a situation. Like now I'm stuck there, you know, yeah, you didn't even want to be there in the first place. And yeah. now you're like not in your right headspace mm -hmm. or, you know, somebody posted something and it really made me think about this. They said that like, it's not that you don't want to go to the event. It's the fact that you you don't want to do like the uh, like you're not strong enough to do all the other things that you don't want to do so like you want to go to the event and you want to meet people but maybe you don't like drinking and you're not confident enough because you don't have that drink in your hand but you can still like I'm living proof of this like I, mm -hmm. I'll go to events and now I have conversations with people and they're so much more meaningful and like I might not be like oh, like you know running around the party yeah. and like <laughs> you know just like randomly hugging everybody but I have one or two conversations that I'm so present for and they're so meaningful and I will like make those connections or I can read the room real quick and I'll be like I'm really not like this is probably not a good time for me to be here I should go home like yeah um so there is that thing too I feel like a lot of people just feel this pressure that you have to act a certain way when you go to an event or you you have to drink or you have to do mm -hmm. these things and it's like no, you don't really you do have to do have any to. of it. Oh my God. I don't even know what you're about to say, but I know. <laughs> what is the secret talent that you can do? You if go mine, first, you go first. If I go to a party and do this trick, I'm probably getting kicked out. Oh shit. Hi, I'm Blart Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, not to brag, but I can twist my whole arm around. Oh, oh. I've been waiting for this moment. Do it, do it. And my thumbs are double jointed. Oh. And <laughs> I didn't even need one. You have like five. I'm just I can do the one. wave. I can do the wave with my eyebrows if I'm not laughing. So hold on. No one make me laugh. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment, man. Oh my God. I mean, if we're to, like, I could do some impressions. Do it. Um, do you know who Cher is? Yes. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> I can thank my gay uncles for this one. <laughs> Listen to a lot of Cher my whole life. <laughs> Hold on. I'm sorry. I feel like they're watching me because they are and they're pointing a camera at me. <clears throat> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Sit around and wait for you. Well, I can't do that. And there's no turning back. <laughs> oh, my God. I could do more, but I'm like, my voice oh is so shaky. Oh, my shaky. gosh. Or Bob Dylan. I want you so I don't know who that bit. Is. What? Oh, my gosh. Michaela. I don't know anybody. Okay. The only reason I know Cher is because I did a solo to one of her songs when I was like 12. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen the last of me. Oh, my God. Work. <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> All right. So I actually have a lot of upcoming projects coming. Some of them are secret, but I can say that I am going to be releasing a lot of music soon. Um, I have always loved singing, but I thought that I was terrible at it. But then about two years ago, no, like three or four years ago, I met this guy in Michigan that um, he was like singing on a track for this girl I was back up dancing for. He was like, you should sing. And I was like, uh, <laughs> good joke, buddy. But long story short, I like recorded two songs with him and I like released two singles back then. But now I'm like, hmm, I don't want to be a backup dancer anymore. Like I want to be the artist and I want to be like the dancer, the singer, the triple threat, like I wanna do it all. So I started teaming up with a lot of people and I'm making a lot of music right now and I'm doing more like R&B type stuff because Summer Walker is my favorite artist. Um, those are the vibes I like, like smooth, sexy vibes. 
Um, so it's I have a so lot good. of stuff. It's so Thank good. You. I've heard some of it and it's so good. <laughs> like when Thank I heard you. you sing for the first, I cried, right? <laughs> she I, she played it for me and I was like, Michaela. I was like, it sounds so pretty. <laughs> She's like my older sister that I never had, but I've always wanted. Aww. I love her. I love you. But yeah, so I'm going to release a lot of music. I'm shooting to like release my first single in 2022. Yeah. And then, you know, like with that, eventually I'm going to figure out like music videos and stuff and release parties and all that fun stuff that's going to be like very stressful but also the best experience ever <laughs> it's a, gr a growing experience. yes it's gonna be a lot but i'm so ready for it um and then i'm working on dropping like a twerk shorts line um i think that's gonna be a bit of a process because i'm very picky and like i want my product to be really good because i've been wanting to do this for a while um and then just like content creating i have so many things up my sleeve i don't want to like give away too much yet but i'm really excited i think 2022 is probably going to be the craziest and best year of my life <laughs> yes declare that also 22 is my favorite number yeah. i'm turning 22 two twos like that's my favorite number i swear <sighs> to god it's my lucky number we're about to have the best Dude. year ever 22 <laughs> yay for music <laughs> <laughs> yay and then, um, you know, we're on TikTok, like we said, YouTube, Facebook. Snapchat, Twitter, Snapchat. Facebook. Mm -hmm. You name it, we're probably there. <laughs> LinkedIn, that's a great one. <laughs> um, Ain't nobody know about LinkedIn. Call my me My space. Don't have the space of mine anymore. I don't even know what that is. <gasps> <gasps> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, and now there's meta, right? Should we start doing, like, things about VR? I have no idea what that is either. Facebook just turned into Meta. Meta. We'll talk about it later. I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So, Michaela, thank you for having me. Thank you for doing this with me. This was so fun. This was so much fun. I feel like we're such chatterboxes. We could totally we do are. it again. <laughs> we had more things I to I want to do this all the time. Like, I love talking. And I hope you guys like hearing us talk. Because <laughs> there's going to be a lot more of it. <laughs> yes. And there's a lot more amazing women Especially like friends I could send your way and things yes. like that. To That's kind of something that I want to do. And you guys let me know your thoughts. I'm probably going to do it regardless of what you say. But <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to start doing like a woman's like podcast slash YouTube interview series where I just bring in like a new girl every single time. Like um, moms, children, teenagers, business women, uh singers fakers tiktokers whatever cooks <laughs> i just want to bring in a new girl every week because i feel like women are so inspiring and i feel like just as a woman like i love hearing other people's stories yeah. and i just want to like do something like that i think it'd be cool to like start a little series yay so subscribe <laughs> subscribe subscribe to Hit that like it. button comment <laughs> below tell I us what your know, party trick is i never know what what's uh, your party trick <laughs> <laughs> I never know what side the subscribe button is, so I always go like this because I know it'll work. Like and subscribe. Like when you're at an airport, you could just you could do one of those. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this way. <laughs> Maybe it's this way. Regardless. And also, if you want to, you know, hit the notification bell, if you want to like, it really helps YouTube algorithm. Make sure you subscribe to Josette, too. I'm going to uh, link her in the description thank you Michaela. or the title i don't really know how youtube works yet yeah we're figuring <laughs> it out <laughs> okay bye <laughs>